Praise God. You know, uh, there, there was a family that came and they, 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 start, they came to the service and, and they said, Pastor, you know, we came to church and you preached it. It was a great message and we're so blessed and, 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 and we gave our offering and it was awesome. And, and then you preached another message. <laughs> if that's you today, welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you have, uh, have at least thought about buying a helmet because of all the stuff happening today this, in the world? It's almost like you don't want to go outside without a helmet on, you know? I mean, I can't think of all the, all the things that are happening in the world that, that have been happening all at the same time, you know? We, we live in a very unique time, amen? And some people say, oh, is this the end time? Well, if you die, it's the end for you. So, you know, don't, don't try to, is it the end of the world? Well, if, if this is your last day on earth, it's the end for you. You know, however way that comes, it comes. Amen. And so we can't be living as if there is no more time. I mean, I mean we should always be ready to, to, to be caught up in the air with Jesus. Amen. The word of God says that, that the trumpet of sound, the dead in Christ shall rise up, and then we who remain shall be caught up in the air. And, and then and it talks about the, the rapture of the church, and then it talks about that we comfort one another, knowing that, that our Lord and Savior are, is coming for us. Amen? And so we're not, we're not by ourselves. We're not, we're not lost. We have a Savior. We're found. Amen? And so we shouldn't live in, 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 in any fear. Amen? Tell your neighbor, no fear here. Amen? And so I want to just share a word with you today about the presence of the Lord. Because if there's anything we need now is we need his presence. Amen. God desires relationship with us. He wants you to know him. He wants you to, to be able to experience his, his goodness and his glory. He wants you to have intimacy with him. He loves to be with you. The problem is that we don't want to be with him as much as he wants to be with us. You know, if there's anything that God desires more than anything is you. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So he loves you, amen. Tell your neighbor, Jesus loves me. Tell, tell your neighbor, the Father loves me. Right? He loves you. He loves you greatly. And if nobody loves you, it's okay. The Father loves you. He loves you more than any man can love you or any woman can love you. He loves you. Amen. The Bible said, uh, you know, he talks about that, that nothing can separate you from his love. So even when you're at night, he's watching over you. And I love to tell you, you know, that, that God's a stalker. He is just so into you. When you wake up, he's watching. When you walk out of the, street, out, uh, of the house, he's watching. When you're driving down the street, he's watching. Amen. Even when you go to places you shouldn't be going. And doing things you shouldn't be doing. He's watching. He loves you. He's not disgusted with you. He loves you. Amen. And the Bible says nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen. If you can, go to Psalms 139. Psalms 139. We're talking about running into his presence. Beginning in verse 1, it says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You know, when we're reading this, you know, take this personal, Amen. Verse 5, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand a blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the, wind, the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. 
But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Amen. When the earthquake took place this past week in, in Mexico City, one of our, our, uh, our crusade uh, team members, our, a pastor who's actually my crusade director in, in Mexico, and he's, he's, him and his wife are, are, are going to Argentina tomorrow to be with me. And uh, they were, he, he was in the airport in Mexico City when the earthquake hit. Him and his son were there. And so he told me that when it hit, everything began to shake in the, in, the, in the airport. It was actually two earthquakes. People don't know. It was actually two earthquakes in two different locations. And one of them was this earthquake. And he, he says it, it, it was like things just seemed like they were spinning. But then when the big earthquake hit, it was things that were going up and down. And he was in the second floor of this. It's a very modern airport. And things just began to fall over. People began to fall over. You couldn't really walk or run because it seemed like, you know, you take a step and you'd be knocked over. Everything was shaking. So he got to his son and he grabbed his son. And both of them went to a pillar and grabbed a hold of the pillar. And he said that there was this one woman that, that she was running, didn't know what to do. So he grabbed a hold of her and pulled her with, with her son and with his son. And, and they were all around the pillar. The biggest thing they could find to, to, for any type of support was that pillar. So they found it in that pillar. And he said it, it happened maybe, it last, lasted maybe a, a couple of minutes, but it seemed like it was an eternity. When the when Pastor Ray and the team were flying into Mexico City, they said, they said uh, when they saw the plane, it looked like a giant had just stepped on an entire city. Things were just crushed all over. You know, we see a scope on the news, but whatever you see on news, just magnify it because you really can't understand the suffering. We pray for Mexico. We pray for Puerto Rico. We pray for all the islands that have been impacted by the hurricanes and the earthquakes and the things that are going on. We pray that the Lord will have mercy and help them rebuild. Amen. We lift them up in prayer. But it's so important to know that no matter what happens in this world, there is a foundation that will never be shaken. And that foundation is found in the kingdom of God. It's found in the presence of the Lord. When it seems like our relationships are being shaken or our lives are being shaken or the things around us are being shaken, if we will run into the presence of the Lord, you will begin to stand on firm foundation. And that foundation of the kingdom will never be shaken. And so there's always safety in the presence of the Lord. There's peace in the presence of the Lord. There's provision in the presence of the Lord. Whatever you need is found in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And the presence of the Lord is not hidden. It's not, God's not holding back his presence. His presence is available anytime you desire to enter in. Anytime you want to go and be with God, God will show up in your life. His presence will be magnified. You will sense the presence of God. You will know that God is there with you. And you will find that God will answer those questions in his presence. The questions that you might have, amen. Everything you need is in his presence, amen. Because when the king, of, the king comes, when Jesus shows up, he brings his kingdom with him. His glory, his majesty, his provision, his power. You might say, say well, it seems like this economy does not have enough to supply the demands and the needs. But if we will learn to live in the kingdom of God, whatever we need will be supplied. Because there's no lack in the kingdom of God. And we might say, well, our armies are, might not be big enough to fight the giants that we're facing. But if you will learn to rest in the presence of God, you will see that the Lord of hosts will come with his armies and he will defend you and fight your battles for you. In his presence, there's peace. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Everything you need is in the presence of the Lord. And so if we know that everything we need is in the presence of the Lord. Why would you ever come out? Why would you ever choose not to be in the presence of God? Because the presence of God is not just one moment or another. The presence of God is a lasting presence that you can walk with him all the days of your life. Where you know him and he knows you and where he will speak to you and you have communion with him. Relationship, a giving of to one another and receiving from one another. An overwhelming sense of that no, knowing that no matter where you are at, God is there. In his presence. Amen. 
And so we must run into his presence. We must run to the victory that God has given us in his presence. Jesus, the king of glory, has overcome. He's given us that victory, but it's only found with him. You cannot expect light to shine, to shine if you're never with the light. If you're walking in darkness, you cannot say, well, where's the light? Well, you're walking in darkness. But if you walk in the light, you will see that the darkness will run away from you. Amen. There are times you might come home and it seems like it's World War III where everybody's fighting with each other. It's because the presence of God is not being manifested in that area. But if you will open up that door and say, I command that devil to get out in the name of Jesus and walk into that room and just begin to thank God and begin to give God glory, watch how the light of Jesus Christ will shine. Amen? Tell your neighbor the presence of the Lord. Run to it. In Proverbs 18, verse 10, it says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. Amen. And so we run to Jesus. We run to Jesus not just for the big things, but for the little things. Decisions that we need to make obstacles that we face we run to the jesus to jesus and we begin to speak to him and recognize his presence wherever we're at when we begin to recognize his presence and begin to speak to him wherever you are at his presence will come and then his word will come his anointing will come his joy and his peace will come and you begin to pull off the weights and the burdens that are weighing you down He'll begin to speak to you clearly the next direction for your life. And he'll give you great peace in the midst of whatever storm you're facing. Amen. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's safety. Amen. And so the Bible says that, that, that the righteous, we run to the, the, the Lord. We run to the name of the Lord. Somebody shout Jesus. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you. Shout Jesus. Yeah. And the Bible says whoever calls upon the name, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so when we face a situation where we don't know what to do, instead of running away, we should be shouting, in the name of Jesus, and speaking to those mountains. In the name of Jesus, commanding those things to leave. In the name of Jesus, we worship you, inviting the presence of the Lord. Someone asked me, how long do you, do you pray? And I tell them, I never stop praying. They say, well, Pastor, how long do you pray during the week to prepare for something? I tell them, I never stop praying. What do you mean? I'm walking down the street talking to my Lord and Savior. I don't visit Jesus. I walk with Jesus. I'm not looking for a visitation. He's here right now. And then I keep my heart sensitive as I, as I recognize his presence so that when he speaks to me, I just obey. Because he is my Lord and he's my Savior. Is he yours? And if he's your Lord, that means he is, he's the one that's guiding and directing your steps. The Bible says whoever follows the, the spirit of God is a son of God. And so if, he's, if he is speaking and if you are obedient, you will experience what he desires for you to have. You'll experience victory. But the problem is that you're not walking, that, not you, but, but people are not walking with Jesus. They keep Jesus in a box. He's for Sunday morning. He's for when pastor prays. He's for that time that maybe one minute before I eat my food, I stop to recognize Jesus. And if that's the way your relationship is with the Lord, what makes you think that in your time of trial, he'll be there? It's kind of like a, a kid, he hears his dad using the name of the Lord in vain. He looks at daddy, hey dad, is it time to eat? Because the only time he heard the name was when they're praying before they eat. You cannot just bring up Jesus when, it's, when you think, oh, it's just convenient for me to bring up Jesus today. And the funny thing is, is, is when people bring up Jesus and they're not walking with Jesus, they bring up Jesus so they could be religious and take up some sort of control and oppress others around them. Trying to put their religion on them. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this because you feel guilty about something. I don't, I don't really want to go there. 
but we run to the name of Jesus and we recognize the presence of the Lord so that no matter what happens on the outside, it does not bring storms on the inside. It is a, his name is a protection. It's a fortress that we can run to. So that no matter what we see on TV, we know that the protection of God is upon our life. And you don't have to claim that curse that might be affecting the world to affect you. Fear should not be in your house. Fear should not be in your house because fear cannot be, cannot stand in the presence of the Lord. When fear tries to rise up in your house because of something heard, seen, or experienced, if you will, if you will glorify the Lord and begin to speak how, how wonderful your king is and invite his presence, just like the light, it will, it will shine and that darkness will leave. But wherever there's fear, it's because there's a lack of the presence of God. There was a family one day, they, they came early in the morning. They, they, they traveled across the border. They, they lived in a small little village in Mexico. And at nighttime, cartel members invaded their, 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 their land, ran off all their police, killed who they wanted to kill. And this family had some wealth. They went into their, their house and held the family at gunpoint with the children all night and just took whatever they wanted. When they left, they crossed the border and the very first place they came was to the church. The mother comes in with all her children, all her relatives, and I bring them into my office. And what do you do when, when, when someone's speaking to you about they just experienced horror? They, were, they didn't even know if they were going to make it that night alive. And their kids could have been killed right in front of them. And they were helpless and defenseless. And so all this fear and anxiety and oppression was upon them. What do I do as a pastor when that happens? I mean, who do you call? What do you do? I just, I looked at them. I said, just sit down. And I, I turn on music. And we just worship the Lord. We just begin to thank God and worship the Lord. We just closed our eyes and begin to pray. And as we begin to worship the Lord, the tears begin to rise up and the, 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 some of the, the groans begin to, to come out. But then it was like the Lord had taken whatever that oppression and that fear that was in them and just removed it out of their hearts. Because in his presence, there's healing. When they left the office, they were, they were set free. They were no longer in fear, amen? We run to the presence of God. We're not people that, that live outside of his presence. We recognize his presence. We don't make up things of God. We don't put on false religion and, and say, well, God doesn't want you to do that. God doesn't want to do that. No, we talk about the goodness of God. The Bible says the goodness of God that leads man to salvation. I can't tell you how many times where people were going through very difficult times and, and I would just begin to worship the Lord. I could have said, oh, you need to change this and change that, but that's man talking. That's man putting their opinion on, on something others are doing. But I just begin to worship the Lord. There was, well, there was a day they called me to a hospital, and there was a man on his deathbed. He was literally just skin and bones. He had uh, some sort of disease in his stomach that was just eating away his body. Didn't know the man, but one of his friends called me and said, would you come? And so I went into the hospital room by myself, and it was just me and this man, and he couldn't even talk. He was, he was so frail. And I sat down next to him, and, and I looked at him, and I was thinking, what, what do I say? What do we do? And the Lord just began to speak to me. He said, just worship me. And I put on worship music, and I began to worship the Lord. And as I began to worship the Lord, the glory of God fell in that room. And then the Lord said, lay hands on him. And I got up, and I laid hands on him. And I spoke healing and peace over that body. I walked out of that room, didn't know what happened to that man, but I knew I obeyed the voice of the Lord. How can God, why does God speak to me? It's because I'm always with him. And when you walk with him and you know his presence and you recognize his presence, he'll begin to speak to you and direct your steps. Five years later, this one man, a friend of mine came and he said, Pastor, will you pray for me? I, I need to talk to you. And he began to tell me, he said, I have, I have 
he says, you know, uh, and he, he gave this man's name. I said, no, I don't know him. And he says, oh, yes, you do. He was dying. And he said that you walked into the room and didn't even say a word and just began to worship God. And you prayed for him. And from that day, he was healed. Five years later, I received that testimony. The presence of the Lord. We run to it. We run to it to minister to others. We run to it to minister to us. We teach our children how to recognize the presence of God. There's a lot of people that are talking about all the negative things that are happening in the world, and they're magnifying the pain and the problems. But why don't we magnify the name of Jesus? Because our victory is in Jesus. It's not by trying to change legislation or change people's minds. It's about seeing Jesus glorified so that their hearts will be changed and they will begin to follow him too. We begin to magnify his name. I want to tell you, parents, you need to step up in your relationship with the Lord. Because we live, we live in a time where we don't know what tomorrow holds. And your kids are confused and scared. And you cannot just say, oh, don't worry about it. That doesn't work. When they're asleep and the devil comes into their, into their room and puts more fear upon them. And they start having these dreams and these, these horrors, horror nightmares because of that fear that was, that was put inside of them. No, parents, da dad, mom, you have to learn to grab your kids' hands and say, let's give it to God. Let's pray. Let's begin to speak life instead of death and begin to teach your kids how to pray and, and to walk in faith and not, not by sight. They should know that, that if anything happens, it's okay because my, my dad knows God. My dad, he, 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 he walks with Jesus. The presence of God's upon his life. Fathers, you need to bless your kids. Never, never stop calling them, hey, son, come over here. Let me pray over you. Father, this is my son. I, bl I bless him in Jesus' name. Use him mightily for your glory in Jesus' name. So that when that kid leaves your house, he knows I have a dad that knows how to speak to our heavenly father. And when that, when that kid is going through something, that kid knows that no matter what, I could call upon the same God that my father calls upon, and he will do the same thing he's done for my father. Because he's my father too. When you and your wife are, are dealing with something that seems like it, it, it's so difficult, we don't know what to do with the future of the family, that's where you grab a hold of your wife's hand and say, honey, let's pray about this. Let's pray about this. Or maybe your, your marriage is starting to break apart and you don't know what to do. It seems like you guys are, are not, not growing together. That's when you stop and say, let's ask God to heal us. Let's ask God to help us. Let's just pray. Because you have to understand, there are things that the enemy puts inside people's hearts, that the bitterness and lies and, and, and confusion. And because when, when you're walking in the dark, you can't see. But when you stop and you begin to pray, the light turns on and now you can see the direction you're supposed to go. Amen. And so we run to the presence of the Lord. Psalms 91 verse 15 says, when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. The more time we spend with him, the more time we walk and we recognize his presence, you will see that, that, that God will be there as soon as you call upon the Lord, the Lord will come quickly. I remember there was a family. I don't know why I'm dealing with a lot of marriages right now, but there was, there was this, this couple. They had been married. They got married young. And uh, they were thinking about getting a divorce. And they were just fighting all the time and fighting all the time. And they were, they were me and my wife's friends. And, and we didn't know anything that was going on. You know, they, on the outside, they looked perfect. But, you know, we, we decided we were going to go visit them. And I, I, told, I told my wife, honey, let's, let's go bring them a cake. It wasn't anybody's birthday. We just wanted to bring them a cake. And so we show up at their house to bring him a cake. 
and they were inside. They were, they were just, they were fighting away. But when we showed up with a cake, we didn't know anything. We, we went and we had cake. And there was just something about having cake that whatever commotion was going on, they began to love each other and heal and forgive each other. Now, don't, tell, don't say, y'all, pastor, you're giving us permission to eat all the cake we want. We're going to have a cake service. <laughs> but, but, but help came. You know, I, I don't know why I woke up and uh, why I, I said, let's just go visit them. And I've never gone to anybody's house and said, let's bring cake. But the Lord knew. Amen. And you will see that as you, reckon, as you walk with the Lord, God will give you the answer to the need that you have. God will begin to direct your steps. God will begin to show you. There might be a problem that you look at and you're thinking, oh, Lord, how am I going to handle this? But yes, as you're walking with the Lord, the Lord will say, why don't you call this person? You call that person, and it was the exact person you needed to speak to. Amen. It's just how God had it all planned up because you decided to walk together with the Lord. I just heard a testimony this past week. I'm not going to say who they are because they're here today. Or I might, but, but there was this one man, he needed a solution and people told him, come to the valley. There's, there's, there's a solution there. And, uh, and so he, he came down and he began to call and didn't get response. And finally, when, when they finally got to speaking, that person ended up being like a key that opened up all these relationships that positioned the, the business to prosper in the future. Amen. And, uh, you know, that person was a girl and that guy, that the, the man, both of them were single and they, they kind of dig each other. <laughs> How God does it? You might be going there looking to do something for business and the Lord says that's going to be your wife or that's going to be your husband. Who knows? Amen. But see, when we follow the Lord, the Lord is always thinking ahead of you. He's always wanting to position you so that you could have victory. Amen. And so we must run into his presence. Tell your neighbor, run into his presence. Amen. And this is for the big things and for the little things. Amen. How much gossip and innuendo will stop if we we choose to pray for one another? Oh, I heard this was happening. Shut your mouth. Pray. But I got to tell somebody what, what they, I saw them. No, shut your mouth. Pray. But I, but. People need to know. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. Shut your mouth. Pray. But they, they did wrong. You're not the judge. Shut your mouth. Pray for them. Hello. And so we, we must walk with Jesus. Run into his presence. I can understand if you were all by yourself and you got the worst news. You know, right now they're talking about nuclear warfare. You should not be, not one ounce of fear. Amen? You, you, right now they're talking about all these, we got, we got racial divisions, we got nuclear warfare, we have uh, immigration, uh, brokenness, we have earthquakes, we have hurricanes, there's tornadoes, there was floods. Listen, if you're not at church, you better start coming to church, okay? Let me just say that. But what do we do? I mean, all this stuff is happening. You know, I would be afraid if I didn't have a shelter. But I have the name of the Lord. I don't just have a shelter. I have a fortress. The righteous run to it and are safe. I walk with Jesus. What would your business be like if you just start walking with Jesus and and say, Lord, I thank you that you go before me and you ordain ordain my steps that wherever I go, I'm going to prosper. How about your joy and your peace? You begin just to worship the Lord. Someone says, I'm so bored. Start worshiping God. You won't be bored anymore. And then your intimacy with God will go to another level where God will begin to speak to you and God will begin to pour out his love upon you. You'll begin to ex- experience like heavenly ecstasies. I don't even know how to talk about it, but it's so amazing. And people look at you and say, why are you always smiling? And, and you look at me and say, 
Jesus. And they'll look at you, that's a weird person. That's not a weird person. That's a person that's been with Jesus. You must go to that church. Faith pleases God. <laughs> Amen. And so we recognize the presence of God wherever we're at. Driving down the car, Lord, I thank you. You're here with me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. You, are welcome. you are welcome. Even in your school, when you're getting ready to take a test, Lord, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. You're with me. You're here to help me in Jesus' name. Amen. You hear the news? Lord, touch them. Bless them. Help them. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We run to it. Amen. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. His presence makes the difference in our life. Amen. Hallelujah.